Hello, uh, this is Dr. Mikolai Rashik of Merogenomics once again. And this is another update video on the mRNA vaccines, a topic that is of great interest to us that we've been following uh, with lots of attention. And I wanted to share some of the information with you that's been published so far that I've been able to come across different news as well as a crazy story that I want to share. It's a hypothesis that I've followed up on and stick around for that one because that's just an, is wild. But first, let's go with what has actually been published. So I'll start with uh, earlier in the month, CNN published an article claiming that there's been almost 6,000 cases of uh, people who in the US who have people who have been in vaccinated but who still got infected this is referred to as uh, breakthrough cases and um, however we need to see it in context because that made a big news and so on sounds provocative but the reality is that this is against 77 million people who have already been vaccinated at that time so we're talking about a super super tiny amount of people who actually would have been affected here so getting actual data on the number of breakthrough cases is not easy i found one report uh, from the washington washington state uh, health department and they reported 0.01 percent of breakthrough cases after vaccination so very very small meaning once you get vaccinated your likelihood of getting infected is supposedly very small however there's actually a published published um, journal on this topic from the data um, uh, that was uh, in California and they reported higher number so they report about 0.1 percent breakthrough cases this is after two weeks of uh, you being vaccinated uh, which is the requisite time you should wait before you can expect to produce the protective antibodies against uh, the virus and they estimated that overall, once you get vaccinated, you have about 1% chance risk of still being infected with the virus. Now, being infected is different than the risk you might have of developing severe COVID, which these vaccines seem to be very effective against. Other news, Moderna published uh, published a study showing that um, their antibodies after Moderna vaccination are present up to six months. So that's actually really cool news. Pfizer also released a press uh, news information saying that uh, now they have data for six months um, for collecting side effects. Uh, impact uh, of after vaccination what are the potential side effects and they're reporting that after six months the toxicity that can be expected uh, from vaccines is the standard that was uh, already originally published um, at, the, at the start when these vaccines were released for use however speaking of Pfizer this was really interesting news the CEO of the company of Pfizer company released an interview where he where he discussed the fact that we might need another booster vac uh, vaccine about a year after you already vaccinated so a third booster if you will so these vaccines are expected to require two and uh you might need another one uh, about a year after but what is really interesting is that he also mentioned that possibly we will need to get a new vaccine every year moving forward afterwards which uh which i was like wait a minute so now we're, it sounds like you know the influenza vaccine where you have to be vaccinating yourself every year so this is a completely different story what than what we were originally hoping for or led to believe and i'll bring that up later on when i come back to my crazy story but let's continue with the type of information that i was able to find related to these vaccines now here's some really really neat information with regards to how effective these vaccines look right now so what are the countries that are most vaccinated in the world right now israel is by far the best in the world this is followed by uk 
with different vaccine though UK uses AstraZeneca which is not an mRNA technology and then US uh, would be in third place with back to mRNA vaccines so Israel is using also mRNA vaccines which is why I'm mentioning because it's of interest to me now what's interesting is that if you look at the peak of infections that most of these countries experience somewhere around mid-January let's say and people were being vaccinated at the time what kind of results have been observed and with Israel for example there's a 99% drop in infections since then so massive decrease if in infections in UK it's 97% drop in in infection rate in that country in third place was South Africa China Mexico and then US was in fifth place with 79% drop in in infection rate since the peak around mid January or so so this the reason why I'm bringing it up is because out of those top five countries with the largest decrease in infections by the virus three of them have the highest rate of vaccinations now that doesn't really mean anything but for now it's a potentially interesting correlation that could perhaps signify the effectiveness of these vaccines what else I can tell you CDC published another very cool report where they studied um, an infection that occurred in a care home facility but the reason why this was interesting is because majority of people residents of that care home were already vaccinated and they've been vaccinated for at least two weeks prior to the infection taking place the infection I believe was introduced by uh, an unvaccinated worker and majority of the staff was were also vaccinated so what was really interesting is yes people did get still infected but they were able to use this incident to study the effectiveness uh, of vaccine on a small scale and they report about 86 to 87 percent effectiveness or the vaccine uh, being able to protect the population of that care home facility so that's really interesting especially since the majority of people who were in infected or who succumbed to infection of the virus they were infected by a new strain of the virus so not not the strain against which these vaccines were actually originally created against now speaking of breakthrough Israel also there was a data uh, published based on some Israel um, vaccination numbers and they also reported breakthrough um, vaccine breakthrough cases so people who were vaccinated but still got sick very low numbers but unfortunately they didn't contrast that against what what it is against the population the reason why this was an interesting publication is because they were showing that those people who still got sick after vaccinated they had a higher likelihood of being infected with a new strain than the old strain which makes sense these vaccines were developed to protect you against the old strain so the very few numbers of people who did get infected in and studied in in that particular study in Israel it looked like there was a higher risk of getting infected with a new strain than the old strain once you get vaccinated and that makes sense nevertheless these were very very low numbers all right that's that's enough about the published information that I was able to find the gap now let's go back to the crazy story I wanted to tell you about so this is comes back I already mentioned it in this in my previous video this comes back to the information um, released by Dr. Gerd van den Bosch so I was able to dig up another interview with him and what he was talking about in much greater detail warning about current vaccination efforts and he actually is in great support of the vaccines what he is claiming where the mistakes uh, mistake is being uh, where we're making a mistake public mistake is the fact that we are vaccinating we are vaccinating ourselves while the pandemic is actually ongoing meaning the virus is present in the population to infect us and what he's warning against is the fact that if you do this you put a pressure on a virus to start mutating itself in order to 
survive this attack. So what he's saying is the vaccines we're using are fantastic, we're just using it at the wrong time. And as a consequence, we are likely to see completely new variants of the virus that are going to be much more dangerous. So the comparison he's making is similar to um, bacteria developing antibiotic resistance. So that's, that's the comparison he chose to, to use, that's the analogy he's using. So we're putting a selective pressure now on the virus to mutate itself to a more dangerous form. Another problem with the vaccination program, he's saying, is the fact that at the same time when you take the vaccine, you build very specific um, immunity. And what he's saying is that, and I'm not an expert in this, so I'm just simply repeating what, uh, what he was documenting or what he was presenting, is the fact that the selective immunity, when it's activated, it suppresses what he refers to as innate immunity. So we have a multiple different layers of immune system and um, some of it is very basic, very broad. It works, it works against a whole bunch of different pathogens at the same time versus selective one works against very specific pathogen so by suppressing our our innate immunity the broad category one we are actually much more likely to become to become uh, at the higher risk of becoming infected later on so uh, what he's saying is that in fact it should be the other way around if you're actually building antibodies right now and you've been vaccinated you should actually quarantine yourself and he's saying we should definitely stop doing this because it's too dangerous now so the question is are these new variants we're seeing are a product of what he's talking about and get this he's saying no he believes that's because of the lockdowns so he's using that as an example where lockdowns we put a pressure on the virus to develop itself into a better category of a virus that is more likely to infect us and the virus muted itself into a form that when it infects us it the infection lasts longer and as a consequence the virus was able to more effectively find new hosts which were more difficult to find as a byproduct of lockdowns so he believes that we're going to build much more dangerous strains still down the road and it's just a matter of weeks he claims so we'll we'll see about that whether whether that prediction will be true or not because because uh it's already been a number of weeks since he published that information or released that interview that i'm talking about and um what he believes is that um, there is a way to fight it and, but not the way we're fighting it right now so interesting prediction we'll see if that will be the case obviously those who are against the vaccines are going to love this information and those who are, are pro vaccines are going, going to absolutely hate it now a number of articles have been published since then denouncing what he's saying including the fact checkers however I wasn't really convinced by those articles myself the reason why is because they didn't use any science to to argue they simply used opinions of other virologists um, to denounce him and to me that, that that's weak although one of the statements that was mentioned that I found very interesting was the fact that listen if we are suppressing our innate, innate immunity right now as a consequence of of um, vaccination and building this uh, specific antibodies then we should be seeing increase in all whole bunch of different infections by bacteria by all other viruses and we're not seeing that so that actually is, is against stands against his own dr uh, bosch's argument so that i will be it will be interesting to see how dr bosch could answer that nevertheless what is the solution he proposes is that we should build a vaccine but vaccine that boosts the innate immunity the one that's broad that works against all pathogens and one example of that that he is specifically um, thinks we should be targeting uh, is a, the type of immunity where in our body we have cells that can detect which of our own cells have been already infected by a virus and this innate immunity cells will then literally just end up killing the infected cells 
do the cells that do this job are they're called NK cells which stands stands for natural killer cells and he believes this is what we should be focusing on as opposed to vaccinating so we'll see what 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 kind of information comes out uh, in the future whether that will support his wild theory or not now I will also add that dr. Bosch is actually world expert vaccine developer so that's really interesting that someone who is absolutely pro vaccine is warning against the current vaccine program and as i mentioned he's warning against it because he claims the mistake that is being made is the fact that we are vaccinating during a pandemic and that should not take place it should be taking taking place um, when pandemic is not no longer ongoing and that's how the type of vaccines that we're developing these specific immunity vaccines they should only be used when there is no pandemic ongoing so so that we have ability to protect ourselves and be protected once the virus attempts to attack us afterwards by doing it during pandemic we basically give the opportunity to virus for the virus to mutate itself to new strains the reason why is because right now we're not effectively killing it 100 percent and we might kill it 90 percent but the very few or whatever number but the very few remaining number of viruses will then be able to mutate themselves to new strains previously what he was saying what we should have done is simply allow to naturally um, reach the herd immunity because at that point yes there will be casualties potentially but there would be no reason for the virus to actually be more more infectious more dangerous because it was already happy infecting infecting people at the rate that it was infecting and that's all the virus care cares for is to find new hosts that that will, the virus can then infect and duplicate itself in so that's a bit of a longer video for today because i wanted to explain that information i will be collecting more information i still haven't been able to found, find anything in relation to mrna vaccines and what they might be doing inside our cells on a molecular level that's still the type of information that i would love to find the most if any of you come across that information definitely definitely uh, send, send it over I would love to be able to actually see that and see what that means so I'll, I'm gonna sign off for now if you like this video give us a like and subscribe to the channel and we'll be making more of the content in the coming future thank you very much